Hello, wherever you are, and welcome to Advent Devotional number 16. This one is called A Time of Preparation, and it was written by Norman Benz, B-E-N-Z. He begins his devotional pointing to the silent years, the 400 silent years. And then he points to hundreds of years before that, Isaiah's prophecies of the Messiah. Reading from the NIV, Isaiah 7, verse 14 and 9, verses 1 and 6. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Then everything changed after the silent years. It was the fulfillment of prophecy. The future was changed. You can see these descriptions uh, as we've been reviewing these devotionals. These descriptions of the Advent are very dramatic, um, just full of of promise, full of uh, faith even. Uh, the Messiah had come. It was unbelievable. God became human. Jesus was the Christ, the Son of Man, but yet he was the Son of God. And Isaiah said, God is with us. Emmanuel. Then uh, Norman Benz gives us an explanation of the Advent. Honestly, this devotional um, could have been first in this lineup. And you'll see why in just a moment. But he explains how many churches observe the season of the Advent. Advent, we know now, means coming. That's the definition of Advent. And it points to the birth of Jesus, our Messiah, but also a time of preparation for his coming. So our focus today is on how we prepare for the presence of God. Advent is a time of preparation, he says. It's a time for seeking the presence of God in our world and watching for the restoration of all things. In our Advent preparations for his coming, here is a powerful truth that emerges according to Norman Benz. Jesus the Christ does not save from a distance. Y'all... <laughs> Jesus the Christ does not save from a distance. This is Norman Benz's attempt to point us to the focus of Emmanuel, being God with us. That he is intimately involved with us. Jesus walks among us. He dwells with us. He went to the disenfranchised. He went to those who were unwanted. He identifies with the oppressed and the excluded. God became flesh. He became poor. He became God with us. So that's something to consider in our day today that Jesus the Christ does not save from a distance. He's in your face with this thing. He is uh, all about community, wanting to be close, wanting to have relationship with us. He is God with us, not God somewhere out there, not God somewhere over the rainbow, not God in my neighbor's house, but he is God with us. He is present with us. So for years, he says, he celebrated the Advent and he gives us a description of each Sunday in the Advent. Now, the four Sundays before Christmas are called the four Sundays of Advent. And he, traditionally in some churches, you'll see the Advent wreath. And it will be a, a green wreath uh, that actually looks like the wreaths we might put on our, our front doors during the holidays. Um, hey, good morning. This is what my wreath looks like. Okay. And so the first Sunday of Advent is the Sunday of Hope. This is where we lit the first purple candle. And it's to remind us that Jesus is the is our hope and he's the hope of the world. The candle of hope reminds us that Jesus is sent to us because of God's great love for us. 
The second Sunday of Advent is the Sunday of love. Again, we light a second purple candle. And it's a reminder that love transforms all and perfects all things. That love never ends. And we light the candle to remind us that God is love. The third Sunday of Advent, uh, which we just completed, is the Sunday of joy. It's called the shepherd's candle. It is the rose or the pink candle. A reminder of how joy is a gift from God. How joy fills us. Joy overtakes us. When we remember what God has done for us and what God has promised to do. The candle reminds us of the angel's news to the shepherds. And then this coming Sunday will be our final fourth Sunday of Advent. It's the Sunday of Peace. And on the fourth Sunday, we light another purple candle. And it's the reminder that Jesus came to bring peace and goodwill on earth. And here's an important thing that Norman Benz says in this devotional, that John the Baptist and all the prophets remind us that to receive peace, we must be prepared for peace. (laughs) Y'all, that's good. To To receive peace, we must be prepared for peace. We light this candle to remind us that Christ is the Prince of Peace, the one promised from the beginning of the world. And we thank God for the hope he gives us and for the peace he bestows. But I want us to really think about that today as we consider that God is Emmanuel, that he's with us. Also considering that to receive his peace, we need to be prepared for his peace. And a lot of times God will work with us. He'll We, we use a phrase saying that God is dealing with me. He's dealing with us. Sometimes he'll deal with us in the frustrations, in the things, and it will prepare our hearts to receive peace. You know, we know people who chase chaos. And they are not comfortable in times of peace. They are only comfortable when there's a fire to fight. They they love the smoke. They love running into the building. They love the rescue. They love uh, running through the danger, the adventure of it. They love all of that. And we're we're wondering what is wrong with y'all? Y'all can't. Y'all don't like sunny days. Y'all don't like uh, calm. No, there are some people who just love to chase. Uh, fires. They love to chase um, chaos. And I want us to consider that. Let's do some introspection today because we can get addicted to the adventure. We can get addicted to the activity and we will not be prepared for peace. And Norman Ben says to receive peace, we have to be prepared for it. And it goes in line with what he says about how Jesus the Christ does not save from a distance. That God gets in our fires with us. He's the Prince of Peace. He comes to to manifest peace in our lives. And I want us to think about that today. Um, do I really prefer peace? Because I mean, you got you have to rest in peace. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing really for us to do. Our human activity uh, is kind of null and void when it comes to the peace of God. So just something else to think about. God is with us. He's Emmanuel. And he does not save from a distance. And two, to receive peace, we must be prepared for it. The final candle of Advent. Let me pick this wreath up again. Is this big white candle in the center. And during the Christmas Eve service, the fifth candle in the middle is the Christ candle and we light that because he has come that's the last candle and the ultimate purpose for our advent preparations is the baby Jesus Um, the necessity of advent has been proven through history where people fail to represent God and so where people fail to give witness even to represent God There is the necessity for the advent of Christ that we have to prepare our hearts for something new, for a change of course, for a change of pace, for a change of scenery, to to, to have something new in our hearing, something new before our vision. We have to prepare for that. Isaiah 43, 19, New Living Translation says, I'm about to do something new. See, I have already begun. 
Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. Here's the prayer today. Holy Spirit, put a longing in our hearts for more of Jesus. Holy Spirit, do a creative work in us, through us, breathe on us, hover over us, give us wisdom and revelation, create within us a great hope, dispel all disappointment, and bring new life and invigorate us with a renewed resolve. Advent is, is such a powerful time. And we remember, it's, a, it's our, our way today to make memorial, to remember that he is our hope, to remember his great love for us in that he came himself in bodily form uh, that was the beginning of redemption. It is uh, our reminder that we can walk in joy, that joy overtakes us, that joy can fill us, uh, that we don't have to be distracted. Now, mind you, it is it takes some effort. It takes some effort. Christianity is not passive. Discipleship is not passive. And we've already seen that Jesus Christ does not save from a distance. And so we have to engage our faith. We have to engage our energy. We have to remove our energy from the things that bear no fruit. And we have to place our energy uh, on, on Christ. Place our energy on the work of Christ. In, in Advent, place our energy on his love for us. Looking for him everywhere. Looking for those signs of Advent. Knowing that we're on the front row. And, and as his friends, we have a front row seat to his appearing. These are the things that have to fill our mind and fill our heart during the Advent. And then uh, to receive this peace of God, to prepare for that peace of God, to say, you know what? I'm tired of all of this chaos. I'm tired of all of this drama. Think of uh, the funnel cloud of a tornado just constantly brewing in my life. If it's not one thing, it's another. And I'm not talking about the processes that come for our development, but I mean the stuff that we feed, the chaos that we feed. The chaos that we get attracted to because it keeps us busy. It keeps us from thinking about the peace of God that we really need to, to slough off and prepare our hearts to receive. So this is the, the, the story of the Advent, that there is a time of preparation. We don't just jump all in about, hey God, here we are. <laughs> But there's a time of preparation. All this year, the Lord has allowed things uh, uh, for us to be exposed to, to be a part of, to witness. And it's been preparing our hearts to receive him in the Advent, to receive him afresh, to receive him anew, for him to breathe on our discipleship experience and for us to end this calendar year saying, you know what, it's a little different. This is a little different. Uh, this is it's fresh. It's something that I haven't seen in the scriptures before. And that's okay. That is how he does it. That we've gone through this year kind of, okay, kind of like Eeyore, kind of like dragging ourselves through. And then you get to Advent. It's like, plug in. Get a new energy. Get a new zeal. Get a new idea. Get a new uh, impression. Get a new uh, excitement. And to, to not just be uh, some of these folk who want to point, wait by the sidelines and point out what culture is doing wrong. No, Jesus Christ does not save from a distance, which means we are infused into uh, commercialized Christmas atmospheres. We are infused with the power of the advent. We are infused with the joy of the Lord. We are infused uh, walking in peace, bringing peace into places of chaos. We are infused because Jesus Christ does not save from a distance. So that means we have no fear in getting in your face. We have no fear in getting face to face with some of this chaos just so we can bring peace in that thing. We can bring understanding in that thing. We can walk into an environment and say, oh, Advent is here. He is coming and he is here because he lives in me. Because the spirit of the Lord dwells in me and I'm coming. We're coming together to bring some understanding about the Advent. And then that final Christ candle, and we're coming upon it very soon now, is to remind us that this um, fifth candle in the center, that white candle is called the Christ candle. 
and it's to remind us that he has come. He is the sole focus of our Advent preparation. He is why we go one one day at a time, searching our heart, looking at a piece here and a piece there of the Advent story, all so that we can look at this white candle. We can look at the coming of Christ, the Advent of Christ, with clean hands and a pure heart, with with scales removed from our vision not really thinking about ourselves so much but really understanding our part in the bigger plan so i hope your faith is getting a a, a new level of excitement it's getting a good shot of excitement because this is the time to hope this is the time y'all and this what we allow into our hearts and to renew our minds during the advent is enough to carry us through the entire next year that it can be advent in january and in june and in august if we keep in our hearts the power of the presence of the Christ. Okay, that is uh, our devotional today. And uh, go with an awareness looking around us that he is God with us, that he does not do anything from a distance. And so don't be afraid to get up close this week. Don't be afraid uh, to, to step in and get involved and engage your faith and bring the presence of God and make a difference and make a difference. The hope of God, the love of God the peace of God and the presence of God. Have a wonderful day, y'all.